think that there is a conceptual argument to uh, moving to a profits-based regime from what is the output-based royalty regime that we have at the moment. Uh, if you're going to shift to a profits-based system, then any reform has to be founded in some fundamental principles, and that is it can't compromise our international competitiveness. It's got to make sure that it is competitively neutral so that scale and ownership and product mix does not become a factor. Uh, you've got to make sure that it actually applies to the resource itself and not the value add downstream activities. And it's got to be prospective so that you don't have any inequity where those who have been in the business for some time uh, are getting penalised and those coming into the business are getting a free run or vice versa if you only put it on the new entrants like the petroleum resource rent tax. And I know that in Western Australia we drive a lot of services for Western Australians and for the mining industry out of those royalties. We have a royalties for regions system where there's lots of money going out into the regions. So I suppose, you know, all of those people would like to have a seat at the table before that was taken away. One of the tests of the tax was going to be where it left us on the competitiveness scale. We were already very high relative to others in the world, so that wasn't a good starting point and uh, when we moved up the curve. So that's not good and none of us, Rio uh, Tito over the last decade, has, uh, the effective tax rate has been about 36% per annum, so it's quite a high level. So any increase in that isn't something that we meet with great belief. Having said that, um, we have reached agreement with the government and the government with us um, on terms that are acceptable to us and, uh, and, on, uh, and on a system which meets the principles to our satisfaction. And I think that the, the, the big risk opportunity for Australia is that this goes on too long. The, you know, the sign on the back of the door that says back in five minutes, we need to turn around again and say open for business because um, we need to, one thing that's fundamental to us realising the opportunity is one of the things that this country has always had by which it's attracted foreign investment and that is a stable fiscal regime. The sooner we get back to that stable environment uh, on the basis that's acceptable to us, the better. As far as I'm concerned, we are in for a generation uh, of economic growth. I mean, you're going to have your humps and bumps and stops and starts and so on. Hopefully no more GFCs in the next uh, generation, but, uh, but you, you're going to have that. It's, it's driven by uh, China, led by China, followed by India, with all of the other nations around the world ready to chip in from the edge of the green. I mean, they've all got their engines revving. Uh, set to go, that, that's what they want to do. They want some of it as well. So it is unstoppable, unbroken uh, force that, that, that we've never we've never seen before. As I say, in, in 2020, uh, we will look back in shock or in wonder uh, at what's actually happened during the past 10 years, almost to, to the sort of extent that we have for the past uh, 20 years. Stuff to then prompting, uh, you know, the process by which.
which additional physical infrastructure gets put in. I think the difference is uh, you have a number of people in the chain, so you have a different port operator from a rail operator, and then of course you have the owners as well, so there are multiple owners, and that, that I think makes the responsiveness to get the whole system in sync uh, much more challenging and if you then, then, if, then if you control the whole system from from mine right through to the port so it's an ongoing challenge I mean um, there have been some improvement it's, it's getting a little better uh, but it clearly remains an area um, that we have to do better at with, with the help of the government and uh, I know Anthony Albanese is uh, is pretty focused on that but I do think uh, while the government um, has an important role clear the blockages in the system, understand what they are, and then work to clearing them. I think there's also a very strong case for the private sector leading the way in infrastructure as well. Um, on infrastructure, I think that we need to promote nation-building infrastructure. We really do. And, but we've also got to, you know, hold different organisations to account. I think that some of those groups who built that infrastructure gained a concession on the basis of providing a rolling service. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean your business is going to be non-competitive. So, you know, in the last two years we've been using the FNG port. And they've made more money because we were there. And we've got to demurrage credit because we were there. You know, they've doubled the capacity of the port head on port by narrowing the gap between ships in the channel. So, there's, so yes, we do lots of things really well, and we are best of world, but, but maybe we can still be better.